Welcome back, Commander. In this video, we'll be featuring China as a Soviet subfaction from a Red Alert 2 mod called Mental Omega. Mental Omega is a free unofficial expansion pack for Command and Conquer Red Alert 2 Yuri's Revenge. It started off as a balance modification created by Speeder and Mevitor and was first released in 2005. After a few years, it had grown into an unofficial sequel with new campaigns for the Allies, Soviets and Yuri. Now, version 3.3 marks the end of the long road and is the final iteration of the Mental Omega mod series. Enhanced with the powerful Ares expansion DLL, Mental Omega 3.3 introduces an entirely new faction to the play, the technologically advanced Phone Revolt, as well as continues to bring new features to command and conquer Red Alert 2 Yuri's Revenge, while maintaining a strong sense of gameplay balance. But before we begin, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel so we can help deliver more info on the battlefield. China is the newest, but an uncertain addition to the Soviet forces steamrolling their way onto the front lines with the heaviest of tanks and unmatched firepower. Though their forces suffer from a dire lack of maneuverability and speed, the Chinese had not suffered as much from the Allied sanctions that were imposed on their Soviet brethren. As a result, the development of potent nuclear weaponry has proceeded unabated and has become prevalent within the Chinese armor divisions. The use of nuclear weaponry and large-scale implementation of electromagnetic technology makes it difficult to directly assault a Chinese base or engage their forces head-on. In combination with the iconic Centurion Siege Crawler and aided by the young, but talented and hard-working scientist Yunru, all tremble beneath the might of the great Chinese dragon with ambitions of continental conquest. This woman, named Yunru, is a highly intelligent prodigy from an early age. She has developed several high-tech weapons under the military's influence, allowing China's army to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Allied forces and even match Epsilon's insidious research later on. Yunru's most well-known invention is the Earthbreaker, a one-of-a-kind massive drill, which, when driven into the ground, can reduce surrounding structures to rubble within seconds. Due to the sheer weight of the weapon, Yunru has built herself a mobile exosuit so that she could wield the drill with ease. The exosuit is equipped with a rather curious wrist device as well. When a vehicle is targeted with the device, the vehicle's onboard computers would become flooded with useless, cluttered data, much like a DDoS attack. Victims of the device then become a vulnerable target to the Chinese forces as their movement and firing systems are overwhelmed from the sheer overflow of data. EMP mines are simple defenses used at choke points or other important locations. Though the blast of a mine can kill or heavily injure infantry, the most prominent feature is that it can disable enemy vehicles for a significant amount of time, either giving a Soviet commander more time to set up his defenses or acting as a trap on the path of unsuspecting enemies. The EMP mines are a contraption to be feared. Due to their chosen technological path and strategy, the Chinese put a large emphasis on their EMP technology. The EMP control station has been designed with one purpose in mind, to stop the faster enemy tanks which are trying to outmaneuver the slow Chinese machines in one spot. By directing enough energy into this building, the Chinese are capable of creating an effective EM pulse anywhere on the battlefield whenever the weapon has fully charged. The pulse created with this device has the largest area effect of all EMP weapons that the Chinese have developed so far. The electromagnetic pulse or EM pulse is a support weapon that will shut all vehicles in the designated area down for 24 seconds. The irradiation is a support power that buffs your mechanical units. All your units affected by this support power will emit a deadly radiation field similar to the eradicator for 36 seconds. This field will not damage units that belong to the owner or his allies. The Chinese Atom Heart is a key structure that allows a Chinese commander to utilize the advanced EMP and nuclear technologies on the battlefield. These two, supported with the Chinese signature earthquake-generating missile called the Wall Buster, give them the upper hand over their enemies in the harsh battle conditions. The Atom Heart also houses the tech required for the construction of the ultimate Chinese siege machine, the Centurion. If an Atom Heart is present on the battlefield, you can be sure that enemy positions will be struck with powerful missile strikes, while the radiation and nuclear weapons will finish them off proving that China excels in raw firepower. To make this advanced research possible, the Atom Heart has a small nuclear reactor of its own for research. When destroyed, it will explode similarly to the nuclear reactor, albeit much less violently. The Atom Heart can launch a special Wallbuster missile, 
designed to destroy enemy fortifications and walls anywhere on the battlefield. Do note that this missile is not very effective against anything else. The gyrocopter is China's take for creating their jump jet infantry similar to the Allied Forces Rocketeer. Equipped with miniature copters and machine guns, the Chinese gyrocopter is better armed and can sustain more damage. Although its weapon lacks accuracy, it makes up for its impressive firing rate and splash effect. It might only be a matter of time before the Chinese equip even more of their forces with their improved deadly machine guns. One thing is certain, when you hear the rotors of these flying machines in the sky, death is soon to follow. Where the Desolator was already an irresponsible effort to create a powerful infantry unit, the Chinese take it a step further in the form of the Eradicator. The Eradicator carries an experimental, even more lethal radiation cannon. So much, in fact, that it constantly leaks radiation, thus making the Eradicator dangerous at all times to surrounding units. Like the Desolator, the Eradicator can deploy in order to irradiate the Earth, however, his spread of irradiation is much bigger. After the Russians had created the Rhino tank, they no longer had any use for the old heavy tank from the previous war and sold the remaining units to their Chinese allies. The Chinese fervently began improving the vehicles, though many problems plagued the development due to the tank being too heavy to transport properly. After several years of tinkering and redesigning, a balance between speed and durability could not be found. Thus, the Chinese decided to sacrifice the tank's mobility and pack as much firepower and armor into it as possible, creating the Killen tank. Its slick design is aimed to decrease drag due to the slow speed of the machine. Some might expect the Killen to follow the stereotype of a cheap knockoff of a tank. The Chinese, however, have not skirted any expenses with it, making it a rather pricey purchase. The addition of EMP countermeasure systems proves it is an advanced piece of technology difficult to stop dead in its tracks. China's primary strategy is that of a great moving wall. Their access to artillery weapons is very limited as they prefer to rely on ridiculously tough armor and powerful weapons, which would be able to crush any sort of resistance, no matter how well designed. An upgrade was proposed, similar to the one the heavy tank received to become the killing, for the gorilla which already proved itself reliable in battle. The armadillo was created not as powerful, but not as technologically demanding and slow as the new one. An ideal weapon for breaking through enemy gates and taking down the defenses, until the moving wall of Nuwa is assembled. Having barely any siege capabilities, the Chinese needed to compensate. The Nuwa cannon they have developed as their super tank is the fearsome Alpha and Omega of destruction. The unfathomable amounts of armor and an atomic cannon firing depleted uranium shells have caused some of the Allied strategists to reclassify it as a defense cannon instead of a vehicle. Outfitted with a nuclear engine just to keep it mobile, the NUWA is equipped with several safety procedures to prevent the engine from rupturing violently when the tank is destroyed. The fact it has no turret does not make them any less effective against the most advanced of enemy tanks. The NUWA, though slow and not able to fire on the move, has been a massive success in the Chinese army often used to take the brunt of the force in a nigh-impenetrable wall of moving armor. Aside from half-tracks, China lacked a dedicated advanced anti-aircraft system to protect their crawling wall of tanks. Filling this gap is the Sentinel, the guardian of the Chinese forces. Sentinels are sluggish vehicles loaded with modified white phosphor flak shells, which react violently with the air when impacting with a target, burning through metal in seconds. Being a specialized anti-aircraft weapon, the Sentinel can only fire upon aircraft in order to ensure maximum effectiveness. One of the Chinese Army's weaknesses is its lack of mobility. In order to solve this, a radical approach was taken. The Dragonfly proves that Chinese EMP weaponry and slow but extremely powerful tanks make for a devastating combination. A single Dragonfly is enough to instantly render almost any enemy unit incapable of firing or moving. Much like its namesake, the Dragonfly is easily swatted out of the air by anti-aircraft units due to its paper-thin armor and lack of any other weapons. Costing untold amounts of money, and with a development period spanning several decades and multiple secret research facilities, the Centurion Siege Crawler is without a doubt the ultimate siege engine. This unit has been built as an artillery with almost none of the flaws of one, sporting some of the heaviest armor of any Soviet unit ever created. Controlled by a simple, but efficient AI, which controls locomotion and targeting, as well as loading and firing the weapons, the walker is utterly loyal to its Chinese generals. 
The entire chassis is built around a massive 420mm cannon, firing huge shells at obscene ranges, which can decimate buildings with only a few shots and quick-firing missile launchers, which take all sorts of aircraft down with ease. To further increase its already immense firepower and versatility, the Centurion can seat three infantry, with Yunru being one that spends time inside of it the most. Although it is a nigh-impregnable moving fortress, the Centurion on its own can still be swarmed by quick, light units. Coupled with its absolutely prodigal building costs, the standard factories on the battlefield are incapable of producing more than one copy at a time on the battlefield, making the Centurion an invaluable asset that should not be wasted. Additionally, none of the largest transports is capable of moving a Centurion over water, so the location of its construction requires some thought as well. This ends the Subfaction Spotlight series of Mental Omega 3.3 mod for Red Alert 2. If you want more Subfaction Spotlight series like these, please click the like button and comment down below on what you want to see next. It will greatly help me deliver more top secret info to you and to our comrades. Until next time, Commander, Battle Control, Terminated. Yeah. <laughs>